What's up, YouTube family? So currently, President Trump, Senator McConnell, Steve Mnuchin have been together in a meeting today to discuss the next economic stimulus plan. All throughout the Congress, there is a motion to have something approved before they go on recess again on August the 7th. Right now, I'm going to give you some of the details from that early meeting that uh, Trump, McConnell, and Steve Mnuchin had. Some of the things that they're proposing to put in this economic stimulus and some of the things that they may be leaving out. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about that next. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Zachary Shelton Jr. and I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Warwick Shore Advisors. We are a wealth and investment management firm located in Orlando, Florida with clients all across the United States. If this is your first time coming to my channel or seeing one of my videos, I ask that you please hit the subscribe button. Please like and share this video to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. Before we get into today's topic, I want to offer you a free financial planning cheat sheet. If um, you would like it, it's completely free. There's no obligation for it. Just send me a message um, at the email address in the description of this video or leave a comment below with your email address and I will send it over to you. It can help you uh, get a snapshot of your overall financial health right now as well as build a plan for investing in our current market environment. So some of the things right now that Congress, I should say more so President Trump, and the Senate are looking to put in the economic stimulus plan has to do with pretty much a back to school bonus for those schools that reopen on time and don't delay going back to school, as well as um, more infrastructure planning and some other things. I'm gonna play a video so you can kind of hear what the tenor of that meeting is that took place earlier today. As well, I'm gonna share a video with you um, with some other senators from Congress, or I should say, Senator, Republican senators and let you get a feel for what their ideas are and some of the things that they're proposing right now for the next economic stimulus. Some reporting on this meeting at the White House uh, between the president and Leader McConnell. Let's get to Kayla Tausche. Morning, Kayla. Good morning, Carl. We're just watching that video come in uh, of the Oval Office spray. The president at the Resolute desk on one side, his Treasury Secretary and Chief of Staff on the other, the top Republican leaders from Capitol Hill. They're talking about their priorities for this next stimulus package. The Treasury Secretary said they will focus on jobs, kids and vaccines, that there will be tax incentives and credits for things like schools that are able to open safely uh, and other businesses. They kept the conversation high level, but there were a couple uh, points of interest that we should highlight. The first is uh, that the president doubled down on that payroll tax cut. And when he asked the room about support for that, he did get a nod from Kevin McCarthy, the top Republican in the House of Representatives. But he just got a smile from Mitch McConnell, the top Republican in the Senate, where support for that payroll tax cut has been hard to come by. The president also said that he is going to be resuming the coronavirus task force briefings, that they will likely happen uh, at 5 p.m. beginning either today or tomorrow to continue to update the nation on the efforts to get a vaccine and to develop a more therapeutics to fight COVID-19. Uh, but certainly as far as the stimulus package goes, McConnell said that he's going to be socializing uh, this package or this set of ideas with Republican members in the coming days to try to reach a consensus on what Republicans Republicans want to put forth as uh, their counter to what the Democrats passed back in May. Uh, on that, uh, the, uh, the president still talks about it, but uh, is anyone else, is McConnell or, or is that, I don't want to say DOA, that's a bad term to use uh, lately, but is it, is it not so going to make the, the, it in, into the bill, Senator? It's certainly in the mix. To me, it's just one arrow uh, in, the, in the quiver of what could help and what could work. Uh, it would let people that do have jobs keep more of their hard-earned money. It would make it a little easier for employers, I think, to hire people if we get rid of this unemployment insurance big bonus. Uh, but, you know, this is money that ultimately goes into the Social Security Trust Fund, so you would end up ultimately having to make it up in another way. It does look, according to The Economist, like it would give us 2 million to 3 million new jobs in America. So there's some value uh, in doing this. And it's just one of the points for discussion as we go through the negotiations. Where, where do you think the compromise, if there is a compromise, Democrats aren't thrilled with, with the liability, employer liability. But, you know, I don't know whether Republicans are ready for the, the state and 
uh, and city and local uh, aid. Is that is that a potential where you could see those two things both in the bill and, and uh, that's how the two sides could agree? Well, there's that area and also the total area, the total uh, amount of spending. Joe, as you know, uh, you know, you're never going to be able to outpromise uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi when it comes to spending taxpayer money. I mean, they fire that money cannon aimed at their targets, and they're very, very good at it. The Republicans are, are in full agreement that that uh, $3 trillion a approach by Nancy Pelosi really is uh, fantasy island, and we need to look at a much more reasonable amount of money, closer to a trillion dollars. But there's going to be negotiations both once you get that total package number, that ceiling number, and then what the different parts are underneath that a part. Is there direct payment checks to people making below a certain amount of money? Is there some unemployment insurance at a much lower number? Uh, what flexibility the, the states have with using the money. There are a lot of different things. There are a lot of moving parts and a lot of people that are having input in this. But ultimately, you need something that Nancy Pelosi will bring to the House and say, please pass this, that Mitch takes to the Senate and says, well, this is a good deal, and that the president says, I'm willing to sign. So it's going to be between one and three trillion. It, it, closer, to, closer to one, in your view? Uh, that's that's the number I would like to see. And we have uh, members of the Republican conference who believe that we shouldn't put any additional right. money into this. And people are going to be coming back to our conference and we're going to hear stories from their home states. I have stories from Wyoming about what is the best way to move forward, what we're seeing, not just with the disease, but with the economy, the importance of getting kids back to school in agreement with the American Academy of Pediatricians. The, the risk of keeping kids out of school is much higher than the risk of putting children in school. That's where they need to be. And the pediatricians say they need to be there, Joe, in uh, person. Well, I hope you've steeled yourself for this. I mean, I know you're back, but you got to go all the way to the 7th of August. I mean, you got, I mean you're crazy. You guys are thinking about really working two weeks in a row? Is that, uh, I mean, did, you got to get, you need a new agent or something. Is that, have you steeled well, you yourself? Know the house, the, huh? you were correct. The correct, the correct report, when the House is planning to adjourn, the Senate's going to be meeting into, into August. So oh, we're going okay, to get this House. done right. before, anyone, before anyone leaves. We're going to come to consensus you're, on this. You're nuts. You're crazy. You're working too hard. Senator, thank you. So one of the big topics of concern that has differing opinions between all, both sides of the aisle, I should say, across all platforms in Congress, um, the Democratic Party, Republican Party, as well as across the uh, across the Senate, House of Representatives, in the White House, is payroll tax. Having that cut in the payroll tax, that's something that the White House is presenting and they really want to move forward with. Um, and it's not getting a lot of traction on both sides of the aisle. Some people are for it, some people are against it, and I'll explain that to you why that is. So right now with the payroll tax, seven and a half percent is paid or a little over that is paid by the employee and a matching amount of that is paid by the employer in taxes from each pay period. Now that money is used partially to fund the social security income trust that we use in this country right now. So many people are on social security. A lot of people, a lot of retirees are claiming that income. And this is the only lifeline that they have to live off of. As our economy has grown so much and as the population of this country has grown, the SSI system is depleting itself quicker than anticipated, at least when it was founded. So as of right now, it's approximately estimated to be another 10 to 15 years before the SSI trust is completely depleted. So that means that Social Security will be completely gone and nothing will be there. So this is a major part of why there's a big amount of pushback with cutting those payroll taxes. And the other thing about the payroll taxes, they are essentially not being cut. They're saying that they're being cut, but the way that the bill is possibly going to be written, at least from the feedback from the meeting earlier today, is that it's going to be deferred into the future. So those employees and those companies that are paying that tax will potentially defer it for an indeterminate amount of time into the future, maybe for one year, maybe for three years, or maybe on a time level based upon um, the progression of this pandemic and economic recovery. So with that being the case, 
If it's not cut, then we're going to be paying into it at a later time, which in that scenario means that we're still going to pay the same amount of taxes. It's just we're going to get a recess from the taxes right now. We're still going to be paying it on the back end of it. So give me your thoughts. Let me know what you feel about that. Let me know what you feel about the possible infrastructure plan or even the back to school bonus, as I'm calling it. Um, for all those school systems out there that are, are planning to go back to school and is it fair for the school systems that are in I should say more rural areas that don't have a lot of urban population that really have not seen a large spike in coronavirus cases to be able to receive more money than schools that are in urban areas um, that have seen a large spike. Um, this is kind of forcing the hand for a lot of schools to, to reopen and go back um, to class, back to face-to-face -face class, which I understand. I'm all for face-to-face, -face, but more importantly, I'm all for safety, whatever is the best option. Um, I have three kids, so for me, I would love for the kids to go back to school so I can make it easier for me to do my nine-to-five job every day. But at the same time, I understand that I don't want the kids to go to school, um, possibly get sick, have a or take the virus to school, get someone else sick, and you know, it's just so many things that can happen from that. Um, the school that my kids go to does have some elderly teachers, elderly faculty, older people that we all love, and they may have other people there that just may have compromised immune systems, and we don't want to you know, cause that spread or cause anything negative to happen in that respect. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about it. There wasn't much talk as of yet as about the actual stimulus payments to individuals. So hopefully that's going to be worked out. I know Senator McConnell said he's going to float these ideas in the discussion that he had with the president, Steve Mnuchin, around for the next three days around the Senate and see what kind of feedback he gets from that. And as a result from there, he'll move forward to uh, presenting a final bill to the Senate and hopefully to Congress and something that we can get approved. If you have any questions, please leave your comments and questions below. I will do my best to get to all of those and answer those as quickly as possible. And lastly, before you leave my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Please ring the bell so you get an update each time I post a new video. And lastly, please like and share this video to help me increase the financial literacy of our globe. Thank you so much and have a great day.